Welcome back. This is Riders of the Dawn. This is Stu. This is Jay. And today uh, we're going to do part two of our marketing. Or not our marketing. Our how to self publish a book. Yes. Um, because our first one, we basically spent the entire time saying, like, you have to. You have to be thinking about marketing right at the beginning. <laughs> right at the beginning, yeah. And and really, it's like before you even write the book, you have to think about how it's, who's going to read it, and how you would tell somebody about how you tell somebody about it, and how you you would connect it to what they already know, so that they know whether or not it's gonna it's gonna please them, yeah. right? So yeah. like we talked about some, you know, if we talk about Jim Butcher. If you're writing, if you're writing. Urban fantasy, are you going to write the Jim... Bu- are you going for Jim Butcher fans, or are you going for, like, the paranormal romance yeah. fans? Are you going for his wife's fans? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> his wife His wife also writes paranormal romance, and I can't remember her name, but it's it's Butcher. Um, I remember I saw I saw them on a panel in, uh, in a writing con in Tucson, and it was really interesting because, because one of the questions was, what's the difference between urban fantasy and um, paranormal romance? And and his wife was just like, uh, "There's lots of sex in paranormal romance. That's pretty much the difference." Um, <laughs> and and I read one of her books, and it's basically erotica, like <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's it's uh, paranormal erotica, really. And it, it was we all we already know that the romance genre is really just an erotica genre. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. So this is something I, I did not consider when I wrote my first book. I had this was not even on my consideration because you have to you have to figure out your process, right? And we've talked a lot about process and how to get from start to finish. Yeah, I mean, there's somewhat honestly, it's kind of advanced play to be thinking about the market before you write a book and be considering these things. You if if you've never done it before, you, you're probably better off just writing what. What, writing from your heart and then editing this really merge we should pick up yeah. editing from the audience's perspective yeah so editing with the audience so yes uh, last time we ended off talking about how to get how to get someone to edit your book uh, without without paying an arm and a leg for it um, and I, I had mentioned you know look up your old English teacher and have them have them look at it because you're not going to have a bunch of beta readers available if you haven't already built your your website and your platform and a bunch of uh, people subscribing to your website to who, who are going to be willing to read an unknown product from an unknown author. Yeah, uh, there and frankly you need to be unknown to them and you become yeah. unknown to them by delivering content. Yeah. Um, that's just how you have to do it. You have to deliver content. Yeah. So, uh, so um, parts of your story or other stories for them to read, give them a free ebook of like your first book you did or, or a shorter book, you know, you have to find some, some, some value to deliver to people before they're really going to, to like, to have, you're trying to build a relationship with the reader. Yeah. That's, that's really what it's all about. And honestly, that's marketing in 2017. Yeah. The best marketing is not, is not buy my crap and spamming people or buying TV ads or something. The best, the best marketing in 2017 is finding an audience and making a connection with them. Yeah. So that they will then want to trade your money for your product and feel like they got a deal. Yeah, that's not, that's not only marketing that, in But the the best way to to avoid um, piracy, honestly, is is not people wanting to buy your book. It's people wanting to support you. Support it's, you. It's yeah. why uh, Patreon is so is so huge now because people want to support the work of the people that they they enjoy seeing. Um, so you, Unless so, it's Winterson, then you have a bunch of, of fans that are pissed <laughs> off that 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 they raised a bunch of money to build a studio so that they could put out more products <laughs> faster, uh, and they're pissed because they want the old. The they're old like, music why can't they just tour ten months out of the year and sell T-shirts? It's like they already did that. They didn't make any money, <laughs> man. Broke, man. <laughs> you don't really, you don't think that they would do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So. Um, this is advanced play. If you if you haven't finished your first book yet, this is going to feel overwhelming. What we're talking about, but put it in the back of your mind because it's important. Um, finish your first book. Don't spend five years on it like I did with mine. Um, just just finish it and and uh, get it out to someone. And the first people who are going to be available to read it are your are your friends and family. Um, 
but it, it might take some poking and prodding because we've said before your your friends and your family aren't your audience. Yeah, and actually, there's a there's another level to that. It's not just that they don't understand, but like let's say you 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 get your friends and family to have everyone go, they all go buy your book right away. Like you're like okay, that's I'm gonna sell my book to my friends and family. I have like 800 Facebook friends, and you get like 150 people to buy your book. That will actually make you possibly a bestseller. Yeah. On Amazon, right? But depending the, on your uh, depending your on your genre. Genres. Yeah, depending on your genre. If you can launch with like 100 sales in the first day, you can actually get a bestseller badge. Yeah. I know that seems weird, but that's actually more books than what traditional publishers sell in a day. So like, keep that in mind. Anyway. You're going to confuse the hell out of Amazon. Yeah. Because they're going to look at all these people buying your book and there's no connection to any other products. Mm -hmm. So they're going to start thinking that people who buy like garden hoses on Amazon want, you know, they're, want they're, your book. Yeah. Want your book. <laughs> and so it's just, it's, you're not, in the long run, yeah, you've sold 100 copies to your family that loves you, but you haven't really, you haven't really gotten Amazon to do its thing to connect you to the readers who want to read your book. Yeah. This is really important, and uh, this is gonna. Uh, it's it's off topic from our initial our initial point, but um, this is this is something that I've been trying to do is uh, contact authors who write in a similar in this in the genre that I write in, and try and cross blog with them uh, to put some of my content on their blog so that their readers will at least look at my book. Uh, because that's how you create that, you know, readers who readers who bought this also were interested in this, and that's what that's what Amazon's algorithm is all about, and that's how you're getting Amazon to sell books for you. Um, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll update that at another at another time because it's a slow process at this point. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you have uh, you have a finished manuscript. How do you edit it for an audience? Mind? First, get somebody else's eyes on it. Um, that's going to catch your grammar mistakes. Now, the thing is, there's always going to be typos to get through. There's typos all throughout uh, traditionally published books. Uh, there's always typos. There's typos in Tolkien. There's typos, there's typos in C.S. Lewis. In, right? Typos in Sanderson. Yeah, you're going to find typos in every single book that exists. And it could be out for 50 years or 100 years, and you still are going to end up finding typos. Because it's just almost impossible with like hundreds of thousands of words to weed them all out. So, should you be concerned about typos? Yes, but let me tell you that audience expectations, only you're only gonna have people knocking you down a star on typos if there's a lot of typos. Right. Most people are just going to ignore the typos, or they're gonna say like, yeah, you know, it's an, it's an indie book and there was some weird formatting, but whatever, it didn't matter, yeah. you know? Uh, other people are, are, anyone who's like super focused on typos is not, they're not, they're, they're your English majors who are pissed off that you published a book. And they yeah, yeah, it. don't worry about them. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like, even if they leave a, let's say they leave a two-star review that says too many typos, and that's basically what it says, A uh, another consumer is going to come by and be like, who cares about the typos? Yeah. I want to read a good story. Yeah, and You know, it's like the people on a on a, on a a Dark Throne review that are like, you know, the, the production is like a two out of ten. It's like, it's Dark Throne. <laughs> it's supposed to be that it, way. They recorded it in a little room. That's the point. That's what makes it sound cool like that, you know? And and honestly, bad reviews like like that one will actually give um, credibility to your good reviews. Yeah. So because um, it's gonna be like, oh well there's they've definitely real people reading this. There's not just a bunch of bots. Yeah. And uh, if you you might read that review and say, Oh, uh, there were some typos and you might say, I don't care about typos. And then you look at the five-star reviews and you're like, oh, all these five-star reviews are talking about things that I do care about. So I'm going to yeah. give it a shot. Yeah, or you have the one-star review that's like, oh, another high fantasy book with elves and this. It's like, that's what I wanted. So I'm, so I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, so it just gives it. you more just gives you more information. It's like uh, if there's a one-star review on a Dark Throne record and go back to Dark Throne and you're like, oh, it's just, it's just sludgy metal. It's like, it's that's what I what want. I want. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so you got to... You want to edit, get the typos out. You want to cut stuff. You generally want to cut on a manuscript. Not always, but usually you want to cut. And you want to cut the stuff that just doesn't do anything. A shorter book is usually going to be better. <laughs> Readers are going to feel better about finishing a book quickly that they've enjoyed 
front to back, then they are going to feel about like they've got some kind of value for a long book. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, you know, if I sell a 500,000 word book, then people are going to feel like they've got a value. It's like, it really just depends on that book. If, yeah. if you can keep them interested all the way through that mega long book. Yeah, the value is in, is in the, the, the experience. Yeah, yeah, the enjoyment. experiment of experience, not the, uh, the time spent. Yeah, so it's like when you hear about people with games, it's like it's a hundred hour game. It's like, yeah, but are those hundred hours fun? Yeah. <laughs> usually, it's some, usually like 20 hours are really fun, and then it's just. Yeah, because some games have a fun hundred hours, other games have a tedious, n- tedious hundred yeah. hours. You know, it really depends on the game. Um, so once you have that manuscript edited and you have it formatted correctly, and you go and go and look up how to actually format an ebook, I have a video on it. Now your ebook is ready. What you need to do is try to get an email list going before you even launch the book. This is probably what I'd suggest now in 2017. And uh, I'm going to try to get an email list going this year for a couple of, of things. Mostly I relied on social media to, to communicate with people, but an email list is just sort of a, it's just another way to, to get to people. It's uh, we talked about platforms before. Well. You know, using social media and, and YouTube and things like that, or even SoundCloud, you're using someone else's platform to, distrib- to distribute your information. If you build an email list, then people are coming to your platform directly. Yeah, you get them onto your site. Which is what you want, um, because you want that traffic coming to your site. It means that people are engaged and interested in what you're doing, and that means that, the, that those people are more likely to buy your book. Yeah, so... Um, the next thing is you need to think about the pre-launch part, which is you need to find some readers who want to read it. And you can do this with an email list. Uh, basically, if you say I, you get a free ebook if you sign up for my email list, and you give them the ebook that you're going to put out, uh, and then um, basically suggest when they get the book that if they if they read it, that it would really help you out if if they left a review on Amazon and that it's launching on this date. But they don't have to buy it since you gave it away for free as a thank you for being on your email list. Right. Um, and, and you should put some samples up on your website. So you should have a yeah. website that's, yeah. you know, whateveryourname.com or, you know. Or whatever. some publishing company that you imagine that you're going to start. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> and um, get, them on, get that stuff on your website. Get, get, it, get, get some samples up and some blog posts. Start blogging about the book, and when you blog about it, you want to use SEO keywords that link to your book. Uh, you want to link to your pre-order. You want to create a pre-order for your book, and you want to link to it from as many sites as you can. So you want to write a you want to write a blog post on Medium. Link to your link to your pre-order page. You want to you know put out some other content. Link to the pre-order page. If you can cross blog like what Matt suggested, link to your link yeah. to your pre-order. Page. You can cross cross blog on Minds. You can cross blog on Medium. You can cross blog on other people on you know other people you've networked with, other authors specifically, um, to get them interested and uh, get their audiences interested. Uh, because uh, putting putting your work on on another person's blog is not it's not a uh, it, it's not an endorsement, but. If if someone if someone allows your content on their site, uh, audiences are going to feel inclined to uh, at least check it out. Uh, it's not a, it's not a real endorsement, but it's kind of like a tacit endorsement. Yeah, if that makes sense. Well, it's just you, you want to increase increase your reach a little bit, and if you can on that cross blog post, get people perhaps on your email list, give them a free preview access to the ebook, yeah. to the ebook or something like that. Um, now you need to cover. So, Talk about well, covers and other podcasts. Well, let's 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 pull it back because I think this will lead into covers really well. Um, make sure that uh, we didn't talk about platforms specifically, but oh, I yeah. think I think we're coming from the perspective of going through Amazon, going through KDP, um, Kindle Direct Publishing. Because, oh yes, yes. Okay, because, so uh, there's there's two ways you can you can go exclusively through Amazon or you can go multi-platform, which would put you through. Um, Something like Smash Words. So yeah, basically, I, I think there's, I think there's two market options. One is Smash Words, which will put you on multiple platforms, and the other one is Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. Yeah. Um, 
for starting out, I recommend KDP. So this, do I. There's a couple reasons. Um, the first reason is that then you can master one platform before trying to do lots. You, it, it's very easy to get overwhelmed if you're trying to manage things on Barnes and Noble and KDP and this and that. And the other thing is, if you are publishing, if you're self-publishing, the lion's share of readers who read independent fiction are buying their products through Amazon. They're not buying them on iBooks and they're not buying them on Barnes and Noble. That's that's sort of um, much more dominated by traditional publishers. It's not saying you shouldn't have that, but like why? Well, why not have all of them and then you you can in, you can just choose not to really interact with the Barnes and Noble iBooks thing because they're available. The reader wants to get them there. Um, the thing is. With, with KDP, you can en enroll in KDP Select, right. which is, I actually get reviews for people who read it on KDP Select. So if people are, if they have this subscri subscription service, which a lot of people do, they can just take a chance on your book for free and they're really likely to leave you a review. And you do get paid on the, on the normalized pages read. Uh, so if your book is good, people will read all the pages and you'll get paid for it. And if your book sucks, they just will put it down. Uh, but at least you put it in front of somebody's eyes and it cost you nothing yeah. to do that. Uh, the, the, the idea behind Smashwords is you're, you're opening your book up to a larger share of the market. But the, the contrast to that is if the lion's share of indie readers are on Amazon, you don't want to spread out your reviews or your, um, yeah, you or your sales onto multiple platforms because, because you really want to get that bestseller badge. Because that's what's going to put you on on the front page of whatever search results. Search or, results, or, and that's that's what's going to uh, continue getting your books sold. Yeah. Uh, so so that's the that's a really really good point. Uh, if if readers have an option for where they can get it, and they'll if they'll get it wherever you want them to get it from, then it's probably better to go through Amazon. Amazon gives you more royalties too if you're exclusively through them. So there's an option. Uh, I kind of monetize my YouTube channel by selling books, so I prefer to do it through Amazon, which gives me the most money. Yeah. Right. It gives me the most money for each book sold. Versus, it's like, well, I really want to buy it on iBooks. It's like, well, please buy it on Amazon. And you can read it on your phone, just like with iBooks. It, yeah. it makes no difference. It's a different app, but it's really a lot better for me if you do it on Amazon. Now, if you're um if you're a much more seasoned author and you have a bunch of books out, you have a pretty serious following. Um, then I don't, I don't see the, I don't really see the downside to going multi-platform. Really, that just means that you can't enroll your book in KDP Select, which you don't, you don't need to if people, if you've already established yourself. You're not going to need the 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 readers kind of the flyby readers. You yeah. just don't need them as much. Yeah. But when you're starting out, those those no risk readers are can make or break. You, yeah, and, that, and that's the point of the email list is that you're trying to get some no risk readers. It's like get a free ebook. If you read it, review it. Review it. That's yep. going to help me. And so you develop a connection with them, and then they read it, and they're like, you know what, I, I do like this. I'm going to give it four, four stars. stars. Yeah. You know, and then they uh, having that four star review. Four stars look really honest. Yeah. You know, five star reviews. I have I have books. All my books have nothing but five star reviews. And it looks kind of bad because I, I feel good about the five-star yeah. reviews, but it's like someone could come by and be like, well, this guy just has a bunch of five-star reviews of people kissing his ass. Yeah. These are probably bots. It's like, or, or like his friends. They're yeah. not my friends. They're completely organic. I never told anybody to go review my books, but they do, uh, which is helpful to me. But anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So from there... Um, once you're enrolled in, in KDP, it's really easy to upload your manuscript. You can you can upload as long oh, Word as your doc. Word Word document is properly formatted, you can just upload your Word document. And it'll look great. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's, have, I have a I have a, a video on that. You want to remove all the formatting marks besides basically page breaks. Yeah. And returns. Yeah. And uh, Word will auto generate like a table of contents and everything for your readers. So yeah, once you do that, it's really easy. Uh, so okay. Book cover. So yeah, okay. So we need to talk about book cover before you put out a pre-order. You need to have a book cover. 
design. Yeah. Um, there's two options. You can learn book cover design and do it yourself. I did that um, with varying results. I think one book cover I did works. I think the other one I did is really good, but doesn't quite work because it doesn't have the genre. It's too original. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't nail the genre. It nails the genre in not the ways that readers really want it to. There's no spaceship on the cover. Yeah. And so I'm going to go back and probably redesign it or get someone else to do one with a spaceship. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be end up being the new cover for that because that's going to that's going to sell. You know, I don't sell that many copies of Prophet of the God Seed, even though I think it's a really good book. Um, and I think it's I think it's the cover. The cover's not doing the work. Um, Muramasa, the cover does a lot of work. It it has a big genre sign on it, which is a sword, a, a katana, and then it looks different from the ones around it. Uh, but it has some of the same color palette, which is red. Um, so red is like a color that you see with samurai fiction. So I have a big red blood thing all over it. It's like blood, and then the names in the blood, handwritten, and then there's um, you know a sword, and that's all you really need to know. Oh, this is samurai fiction, yeah. and. <laughs> Uh, other ones will have, you know, like a, a drawing of a samurai or something like that, and that, that works as well. That really cues the readers in into that, um, to what it is. But I think I think that cover works pretty well, and um, I I like it. If, if you don't know that much about design, it's probably better to spend the money and have a designer do a book cover for you. Either a photo cover or painting. Painting, yeah. Depends on your genre. What you need to do is go look at the go look at the genre that's closest to what your book is in, um, and see what those covers look like. Both the traditionally published ones and the indie published ones. Yeah. The indie published ones, the cover has to work a little harder. Yeah. The traditionally published ones, it doesn't have to work quite as harder. And the goal is to make something that is going to cue, have the same cues for your readers as those books. Yeah. People have this idea, I want to make a really original book cover. The point of the book covers, it's an ad for the book, and you're trying to inform readers as to what they can expect from the book. And if you're not doing that, then they're not going to click on it. If you're not appealing to the readers that you know should already like your story, then your book cover is not going to do what it needs to do. Yeah. The other thing is, a lot of, I mean, you can just go on Twitter and look at indie authors. Oh man, there are some bad book covers out there. Most book covers that authors do, and some that authors, a lot that authors pay for, are really atrocious. And is you know, they have like 3D rendered monsters or dragons on them, <laughs> just kind of pasted everywhere. Yeah. And or they're just look, too busy. Yeah, there's too much stuff on it. Or, uh, or they just look cheap and bad. Like the blending is bad, the colors are bad. There's no, there's no correct design. They're not queuing into the genre at all. The typefacing's bad. There's no drop shadows. They use papyrus um, font. They use papyrus. <laughs> they use bad fonts. Um, they don't... They're like... I, they, they, they work a cover up and they haven't focused enough on the design of other book covers to know what theirs is really supposed to be. So they just kind of put it together and like, I, I like that, I guess. And then they, they put it out. They're like, but I can't afford a book cover. It's like, in a lot of ways, you can't afford not have a because it's going to be, it's the first thing readers see, and if it's not good, they're just going to ignore what mm -hmm. you're doing. Mm -hmm. So think about think about that. If you're writing paranormal romance, it's got to be purple and stuff. It's got to have a photo cover. And a freaking moon and a pretty girl and a city. Like, or, it's got to have or, these really particular... Or throbbing abs. Yeah, it's got to have these really particular elements. Yeah. You know, we talked about some of the colors in the, in the, other, in the other one, but just look at your genre and see what it does. Um, if you're doing high fantasy, it's probably going to be a painting. Of course, there are still photo covers in high fantasy. And yeah. bad ones, bad ones. I did a video on Patrick Rothfuss's Name of the Wind, which has a really bad cover. Um, yeah, it, it, I, don't, I don't know how it communicates anything. But it can, people, I mean, I read it. It barely communicates the genre. It doesn't even have like the right typefacing to communicate yeah. the genre. It, it's, trying to, it's trying to be a literary novel in the fantasy genre. And I guess it worked for that because it was a bestseller. Um, so somebody, I guess maybe, accident. I was accidentally genius. Yeah, <laughs> accidental genius is what I call that kind of stuff. It's like you don't know what you're doing, but because of the timing and stuff, it ends up working out um, pretty well. So um, yeah, uh, we're we're basically out of time. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to do a part, part three, three, which is and... managing cells and keywords. 
right? Yeah, I think so. uh, not only, but specifically like SEO. Yeah, search, search engine, engine optimization, optimization is, is pretty um, important if you want to not be spending money on ad, on, on ads like all the time. Non-stop, yeah. If you want to actually make a, turn a profit. You know. Which is stuff that I think we're still learning too, but we've got a little bit of experience. Yeah, we have a little bit of a lead on you, and we're I'm we're telling you the stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Right. We're both we're both trying to put out a book this summer. So. Yeah. There are, uh, so Water of Awakening, that book's going to be out this summer. Same thing. Immortal Fear is going to be out this summer. So we ought to we ought to like force ourselves into a pre order date. <laughs> pre order. Oh man. Oh, That's I was to say pre order by June second, last day of school. Oh man, it'd be hard because now I gotta I gotta get on this cover design like pronto. All right. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. This is uh, this is Jay. You can find me at MatthewJWellman.com. Stu, you can find me at DavidVStewart.com. S T E W A R T and um, DVSPress.com. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>